just talking to Herschel Walker, I remember the first time I saw him play in person was uh, Georgia against Tennessee. And we've crossed paths over the last couple of decades a few times. When he went to the USFL, when he went to the New Jersey Generals, I remember covering that press conference. And uh, I've seen him uh, down through the years. And uh, he joins us here in the Man Cave. Uh, you got uh, two of the most recognizable fighters in combat sports, uh, Kimbo Slice and the world's most dangerous man, Ken Shamrock, battling for the uh, Bellator cage tonight. Bellator Unfinished Business will air live and free on Spike at 9 Eastern from inside St. Louis Scott Trade Center. Herschel Walker joining us now. Good to see you, man. You hey. look like you're, and it's kind of sad you let your body go, though. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm trying to uh, you know, look like I'm 20. You know, I'm trying to say 20. How much do you weigh? Right now, I'm about 225. And what did you weigh when you played? Uh, 220. <laughs> See? You yes. let yourself yes. go. I let myself go a little bit. Okay. Yes. If, if somebody didn't know Herschel Walker, yes, the one thing that you would say, okay, this is what Herschel Walker was as a football player. Is there one thing you would single out? Yeah, I, I would say I was a football player. And, and let me tell you the reason I say that. Uh, you know, people talk about, when they talk about Hall of Fame and different things, they said running backs, this and that. Well, I wanted to be a football player, meaning I wanted to help a team out to win. And people forget about when I first went to the Cowboys, I didn't just play running back. I was a receiver. People don't even remember. I broke the Cowboys reception record my first time there at the Cowboys, and I was playing slot back, receiver, this and that. But I came out of Georgia as a running back, and I just wanted to be a player. I, it, it had nothing to do with anything else. And, and people thought that. Uh, the coach was putting me there, but I asked to play special team. I asked to do stuff because I just wanted to be a football player. But do you think people look at how great you were and expected more that you ran for over 8,000 yards in the NFL, but somehow that wasn't up to the standards of what we thought Herschel Walker should have well, provided? It, it wasn't up to the standard that I wanted to do, but yeah. even though I still average what, four something a yard, a carrot, I don't know what good, but, but I said I look more for, for myself. And that's the reason I went into that dark place of mine. I always look for myself to be better because I strive to be better. I work to be better. And uh, if I'm not better, it, it's tough on me. But you talk about the dark place. And I remember when you were in your garage. Yes. You were listening to music. The car was on. But people thought you were trying to take your life. Yes. When you're just listening to this song and it was such a great song. Yes. You almost killed yourself. Well, it was a five heartbeats. And uh, that's when the movie was hot, and uh, and uh, it's, it's funny. I drove into the garage, and and I was I just stopped, and so I listened to the songs. But people that know me knew the way I was. I don't sleep much. I sleep maybe three hours a night, three and a half hours a night. But I'm like a giraffe. I can fall asleep for three minutes, wake up, and I'm ready to go. So I was listening to the song, and I closed my eyes, and uh, and I just fell asleep. And it wasn't it wasn't anything. But what was so strange about it? And I give praise to, I had a, a Rottweiler named Al Capone. And Al Capone started barking and stuff and all that. And that's what got woke Sin up, who came down and uh, said, oh, what you going on? Then everybody said, Herschel's trying to kill himself. And I said, no, guys, that, that got nothing to do with it. But, you know, I, I don't really worry about all those people. But you did try to kill yourself. Oh, no. No, I never tried Not to then. kill myself. But never tried to kill myself even during the other time. And when I talk about the Russian roulette, people yeah. say you're trying to kill yourself. I no, that's not, no, because that's against what I believe in. I said, what it was is if you came to my house and said you want to challenge me at something, and, you know, everybody, everybody always want to challenge me. Everybody want to challenge me. It's like, why? And I, I said, okay, then if you want to challenge me, you're tough enough. Let me see you pull this here. Pull this trigger here. Put a bullet in it and spin it. People go, oh, you're crazy. I would take it and put it to my head and snap it. People say, you're trying to kill yourself? No. And I don't know whether I'm just blessed, and and but I am. I've been blessed all my life. That's the same as when you talked about going to the Tennessee game. I was told time and time again that I was not playing in that game. But then all of a sudden, I'm in the game play it, and people get to see what I can do. Time and time again, people told me, Herschel, you can't run that fast. You're too big. Well, all of a sudden, I'm breaking world's record. Time and time, everybody tell me things that I can't do, but yet I'm doing them. And I say that I, I have been blessed all my life. So couldn't we have picked something else if you're that competitive that maybe didn't involve a gun and a bullet? Uh, not at the time. 
I didn't think I, I couldn't find nothing at the time to pick. Couldn't Maybe they I, play one-on-one -on -one in basketball or something? Well, I beat people at one-on-one -on -one in basketball, <laughs> so that's, that's what it was. I was nobody that can play basketball. So this would shut them up if you said, "Let's well, play Russian roulette." Well, it, it will, it will shut them up because you know what was strange. You know, I, I, I you know, I, I have a food company, and I get so many letters, people tweeting. Hurts, I want to challenge you to this. I want to challenge. It's like, guys, you know, like, why do you want to do that? What is, what is it, what is it for? What are you doing? And, you know, like I have nephews and nieces now that's growing bigger. And, you know, and I let them challenge me and stuff because, you know, they're kids and we, we play. But I said, guys, you know, like, like this, was, this was my last fight. A reporter asked me the question. He said, Herschel, why are you doing this? You don't need money and stuff. And I said, guys, I don't do stuff for money. I said, I do it to beat people up. That's what I do it for. And they, they're shocked. I said, I, I don't do stuff uh, for money. You know, you've never seen me renegotiate a contract. Because if I sign it, that's my word. I'm going to play it out. And I, I just go out and I do what I'm supposed to do, and I get the job done. And that's what, I, that's what I tell people. That's the way I am. But what was the dark period? The dark period was, you know, when I was little, uh, you know, I, I used to have a speech impediment. My mom made me feel good. She told me I was a big bone. But all my friends in school, my classmates, said, no, Herschel, you're fat, you're this and that. You, I stuttered. I had teachers that put me in the corner. They told me that I was like special kids. I was retarded. and and that I couldn't learn, and I, I didn't feel good about myself. I hated myself. I didn't like the way I looked. I didn't like the way I sound. And even though when I went home, my parents were nice to me. Well, I got beat up in eighth grade, the last day of school, and I remember going home, and when I got home, a voice came to me that I never, never get beat up again. Another teacher never put me in the corner again. I started working out. You know, that's where all the 5,000 push-ups and 5,000 sit-ups come, and people questioned that, said, there's no way you've done that. I'm like, guys, I didn't get to where I am today by doing two or three or four. If I'm going to compete against guys that bench pressing 500 pounds, I better be doing more than what they're doing. So that's where I got to all doing all that workout to get bigger. I started getting books. I started reading to myself. And so this is eighth grade? This is the uh, summer, the of, summer of a going into the ninth. Yeah. Start reading to myself, and then I become valedictorian in my class. And this is that kid that everyone told that couldn't do anything that person nobody wanted to play with, I get to that point. And, you know, when I went to the University of Georgia, Coach Dooley even said, I don't know if you can play there because I was from one of the smallest schools in the state of Georgia where well, all my life I've heard people say what you cannot do. Well, it's kind of funny. You can do whatever you want to do, but you got to work at it. And if you're going to have somebody that's going to work, I'm going to work because I'm going to get there. You know, you can't do this MMA. You can't fight this MMA. You know, I went out uh, and started training. You know, I own a, I own a business. But I went out to AKA, we were in one of the toughest training camps uh, in MMA. I trained there for nine months, and I didn't just train. I wasn't like over in the corner with, with a couple of coaches. I went in there and I stepped in that cage with Cain Velasquez, stepped in there with Daniel, with Luke, with all the fighters, and I, I took my licks until I got to the point where I can do it too. So that's why I tell people, it ain't like I'm just, uh, when I do things, it ain't like I'm playing around with it. I get down and I get serious with it. We'll come back with Herschel Walker. Uh, when's the next time you fight, by the way? Well, you know, I've told uh, I told Scott, and I've told anyone. You know, I'm I'm still I'm still training, and that I fight whenever they want to fight. They pick someone out, and I, but I want it to be a worthwhile fight. I don't. I, you know, I'm not into like let me go beat up this guy over here to look good. No, it's got to be a fight that's going to be challenging because it's not fair. You know, when my very first fight against uh, was Scott Carson. No, that was my second fight, but my very first fight. I would say they picked a guy, even though the guy had more experience of fighting than I was, I can beat him. Yeah. And and I think that the matchmaker made it like that because they couldn't give me someone that was very experienced because it wouldn't have been fair. But then I said my second fight, Scott was a guy who was at my level, but I still could beat him, I, I felt, because I had confidence. He probably had confidence himself. But I said, if I'm going to do it again, give me someone else that's going to challenge me because – I'm in the ring, in the cage, in training camp with the baddest people in the pl on the planet. So I'm training against them, so I might as well step in there if, I, if I'm going to do it, if I'm going to be a legitimate fight. That's like the fight coming up this weekend with, with, uh, with uh, Kimbo Slice yeah. and Ken Shamrock. People can talk about those two guys saying that they're old, that this, that that. I said, guys, wait a minute. Ken Shamrock, he brought in this MMA. This is a fight that he has been embarrassed Kimbo Slice has embarrassed him but from the very first time. They called him a coward. They called him names. And let me tell you what, athletes have pride. And now Kimbo Slice, who's got an ego, and also he's like a U2 sensation. And I tell you what, neither one of those guys want to lose. So it ain't like these guys are Could old. you beat them? 
Yeah, I can beat him. I better be able to beat him. Why well, just throwing <laughs> yeah. it out there? Yeah, no, can... that's what I'm saying. I'm not gonna. I don't want you to bring out the gun and we got to do Russian right. roulette no, here. No, we can do that tomorrow. Though. We don't have to do that we can do tomorrow. <laughs> Great. Yeah. But but that's what I'm saying. Whenever and I tell athletes all this, that it's sort of like this is a prime example. People always say, Herschel, you play golf." I say, "Yeah, I play golf." They said, "Why don't you ever play in that celebrity golf tournament?" Yeah. I said, "Because I can't win it." They said, "Yeah, but you shoot in the upper 80s, so you'll be competitive." Yeah, but I can't win it. There's no way I'm going to luck up and shoot 69. I know I can't win at golf. I'm a decent. I can go out and play, but I'm not a golfer. Could you beat up all four of my guys at the same time? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I can do that. You can? Okay. Yeah. Well. well. And that, and that comes, comes first, you're talking about a series where – I'm break you breaking legs and stuff. Yeah, I probably could do that. Okay, but I mean, I'm not encouraging that. I, I, I'm no, just no, no, saying what I'm saying. If they got into the uh, oh no, the it, like if we're it, this is this is what you have to say, and this is what I tell guys when you compete. Yeah, and, and well, this is a prime example. I talk to athletes like uh, let's say uh, a small school is playing a big school. I tell those athletes, I said, what makes you different than this guy over here? It's hard. That's what makes you different. And the people, I want to say, you know, we'll say Alabama. Alabama is probably the number one college in football. And I don't care what people say. You know, I love the University of Georgia, but Alabama is at that 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 at that top. Mm -hmm. And I said, what make Alabama better than anyone else? Because the kids Alabama have on their team play with kids on the University of Georgia, play with kids over here. What made them better, they think, is they believe it because they read it in the paper. People are saying that they're better. But when you get out on the field, you're getting in one room. You and this guy from Alabama is in this one room, and they're going to tell only one of you got to come out. Well, who's going to come out? Are you going to let that guy from Alabama come out of that room because he's supposed to be better? Are you going to say, no, this is a little bit different here? So if I convince my guys that they have more heart than you, then they can beat you up is what you're saying. Well, you just said you got to convince them of that. they got to right. believe Well, I've got a couple of minutes. We'll take a break here. By the way – Herschel gets challenged no matter where he goes. You know, we, 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 we're we going to challenge him to a 40-yard dash. Paulie is going to see if he can challenge you in push-ups. Push now, up. you want a 40-yard dash against Paulie or push-ups? We can do push-ups. We ought to do weight on our bike push-ups. You ever done that? I got a lot of weight on my back. No, already. put people on your bike and do push-ups. People on your back. How yeah. about we put people on your back, Paulie just gets to do push-ups? Well, then it wouldn't be even. It wouldn't be fair playing ground. That's sort of like in politics. If you give Donald Trump more... Uh, TV time and don't get it. Other people, people like Donald better. You probably would probably you vote for right Donald now. Trump right now? No, right but, now. But I said right now, but because I don't know what his what he's going to be saying for his what issues he's going to have or what he's going to say to solve problems. But I will say he's a good man. Did is he still paying you from the U.S. No, he was not. Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> now if he, if he was still paying me, I probably vote for him. <laughs> but but I will say this. Donald, uh, if he if I sit down with him and hear what he can do to bring jobs back to America, because one of the problems we have in this country today, we have a problem that we have this elephant and this donkey that is screwing everything up. You're either Republican or you're Democratic, and that's where people stay. When are we going to get to the point that we got to do what's best for this country and forget about what's best for a party? We need an elephant uh, Ella Funky, and that's the part that they should have. That means that we come together and do something. Everybody's fighting now. And, yeah. and I'm going to say this. I'm not trying to tap for Obama or anyone else, but when you play football, you have a leader, and you know this. That quarterback is your leader, meaning I don't care what that quarterback says. I'm gonna, I have to do it because he's the leader. Right now, the president is the leader, but it doesn't seem like anyone around him is listening even though they may disagree with it because he can be out of office soon. But, you know, we got to bring together. You got to have a team together. Right now, we don't have a team together in Congress. Hey, so when are we going to get we're that? We're getting, getting heavy here. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry. I can that. get out of that. You know, yeah. sometimes I, I have that personality that jump over there into <laughs> politics. I'm bringing him back. I'm bringing him back. As the, as the uh, word goes, the rumor goes, you never lifted weights in your life. No, I never lifted that at all. Never? Never. What if, what if the Cowboys said, hey, we're all lifting weights, what would you do? Well, no, I, I normally would go in there and do my exercise, and i do all the push-ups, the pull-ups. And, it, and it's weird because I just never had to. And they didn't make you lift weights? No, but I got tested during the beginning of the season. I get tested, but then I did so well, so they let me do what I was doing. And how fast do you run in the 40? Well, back then or now? Back then. I ran a 4-2 back then. Okay, and what do you run now? 
Well, I, I ran in February of 435. 435. Yes. But somebody should be able to. Well, I, okay, once again, if I, they put the challenge to you. Yes. Can somebody put the challenge to you for you to play football at age 53? No, not really. Because you know, I, I, my what if the be, challenge was they didn't think you could play? Well, it still wouldn't be enough for me. Okay, it's not. Because you know, we got to remember, I got a 15 year old son, and my thing now is I want to be a father. And plus, I got to do what I enjoy doing, and I, I don't think I want to do what other people want me to do. Did you enjoy football? Not until I got to the Cowboys. I think the Cowboys, Coach Landry, made me enjoy it. I think that's when I started enjoying football a little bit more. But when when you saw the Cowboys win after they had traded you, oh, yeah. you what's know, that do to you? You know, I was happy for most of the guys because I played with a lot of them. And even though I was sort of jealous, but then I was, you know what? I can still help my team. I can help my team. Because you know, when I played in Minnesota, that was a tough situation. But Minnesota had a very, very good team. But we were not playing as, as together as a, as a group. So it wasn't the Cowboys' fault. It wasn't anyone else's fault but ours. But people talk about that trade and how it changed the Cowboys. Oh, it changed the Cowboys. for uh, you know, But it, Jerry Jones was smart. But I give credit, and not to Jerry, but to Jimmy. I think Jimmy Jones was the reason that trade happened. I don't think it was Jerry. Did you get along with Jimmy? Oh, we got along great, yes. And then, you know, I, I said this. If, if I had a team today... I have Jimmy Johnson as coach. I have Jimmy to be the one to be the general manager of that team. Would you have Jerry as your owner? Oh, yes. Jerry is one of the best owners in the, in the league. Jerry is a terrible general manager. <laughs> but as an owner, Jerry Jones is probably the best owner in, in football. But they couldn't make it work together. Well, they did make it work. For a while. For a while. They made it work and for a while. And then egos started to play. Well, it's sort of like greed. You yes. got to remember, greed is what will tear you apart. Yeah. But – for a while, they made it work, and they made it work with a lot of great players. I mean, they made it work with a lot of good players, and they made great. Think about it. Yeah, They had a lot of names that nobody never heard of, but they made them great because Jimmy made them play as a team. Now, if you're wondering, uh, Herschel is uh, breathing a little heavy. He uh, just peeled off 30 push-ups. He went against Paulie, and Paulie lost barely. Well, Paul, and he did well. Paulie did well. He did all right. At least he did them. Yes. And and that's what I tell people. At least he did. I mean, I tell people, you don't have to do a hundred. You don't have to do a thousand. Start out with one because tomorrow we'll do two. Next day we'll do three. So you don't have to, like, try to do a hundred at the start. Start off there doing one. Emmett's uh, best running back of all time. I think Walter Payton. Now, I never saw Jim Brown play yeah. or Gail Sayers or O.J. Simpson. You saw the highlights. But I saw. Yeah, I really haven't seen highlights. I've seen like some off and on, but I never really seen highlights of them play. Wait, are you are you a football historian? No, you don't. I never. <laughs> you no, know, I never. You know that's what's so funny. I've never. You know, I know wrestler number two, Ox Baker, The Rock. You know, I know The Rock. I know uh, Thunderbolt Patterson. I know all those guys, but I never really saw football growing up. Could you take The Rock? No, let me tell you, I love The Rock because I, I can smell what The Rock is cooking. Let me tell you what, that guy has been my hero. And let me tell you what's great about him. He is great at what he does, and he's transitioned out of being that wrestler to one hell of an actor. Yeah. That guy he's can act. And not only that, I saw him on Lip Sync Battle. <laughs> hey, he was pretty darn good. And I, and that's what I like. And, and that's what I tell people. You know what's so fun? Herschel Walker, I'm, I'm talking about myself in third person. Herschel Walker is good at what Herschel does. The Rock is good at what The Rock does. So he is my Hall of Famer. But if he got into uh, the ring with you? Now, if, if he got in the ring with me, it may be a different story. Could you take him? I better be able to take him or I wouldn't get in the ring. Okay, but I'm, I'm just curious but then, about then that. I did, did you hear what I said? He does great what he does, and you do great with what right. you do. and that's what I said. If you get in the ring, that means if Herschel Walker is walking in that ring – there's a 99.999% chance Hershey's going to win it or he wouldn't walk in there. Do you ever want to fight like Chuck Liddell or No, I never. I never Randy Couture? About it. No, I never think about that. No? But I say whoever they put up in front of me, I'm going to fight. But in the, if, if it's Chuck Liddell, I say, guys, it's going to be a tough fight. In there. And I wouldn't walk in there if I don't think I can beat the guy. And I advise any fighter, do not walk into a cage if you have any doubt you can't beat any guy. Toughest guy you ever played against? Uh, Lawrence Taylor and Mike Singletary. Why were they so tough? 
because they were a student of the game. And, and you know, Lawrence Taylor had so much athletic ability. The guy weighed, what, 255, could run like a deer. I'm not, the guy was so – he was strong. He could do a lot of things. Mike Singletary was extremely, extremely smart. But did you ever – not fear somebody, but did you ever, like, you knew this was going to hurt if you got hit? No. Never? No, I never feared anyone like that. No, I never. And just like Reggie White. You know, I tell people all the time, Reggie White is probably the best defense lineman I ever seen play. J.J. Watts today, you know, it, you got to give him credit. That guy is an athlete. I don't think he's at the standard Reggie White was, but he's getting there. Yeah, He is getting there, and he's getting there pretty quickly. And guys today are bigger, they're stronger, they're faster. But uh, the guys that don't – well, uh, J.J. Watts has it. There are certain guys that have the old school mentality and a lot of running backs today, and I'm not taking anything away from them. I think Adrian Peterson has the old mentality where could, he can carry the ball 30 times. Could he be? Could he end up as the greatest running back of all time? Well, right now I think he's in a tough situation. You know, I argued with Boomer uh, the other day. I said, Boomer said, you know, is it, I said, you know, one of the things that I'm upset with the NFL about, the Ray Rice situation, the Adrian Peterson situation, because when those guys got in trouble, the NFL sort of turned their bikes on them. We're kicking them out. Well, that's, that's so bad. The, uh, Minnesota Vikings, I don't want Adrian Peterson around no more. I said, guys, we don't kick these guys out because they, they belong in the league. What we do, let's take them, let's rehabilitate them. Because I, I, you know, that's what I work with. I work with soldiers that have come back from war, that I have hospitals they go to. You can treat those guys, show them what's going on in their life put them back into the league as a productive citizen. Then you show young people, you show people outside of football, you know what, if you have a problem, get back up and you can correct that problem. He's Herschel Walker. Uh, Spike TV tonight uh, at 9 Eastern. It's uh, free and it's live. It's great to see you again. Come back in better shape next time, okay? I'll do that.